All right. Hello, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I am going to repot my Catacetum Dumbo Mickey while it is still fast asleep. This is a spent bulb and that's normal. That is what they do. And unfortunately, Dumbo Mickey decided not to bloom for me this year. There was an attempted spike right here and it didn't amount to anything. But I want to get this out of the pot right now so that I can probably preempt doing any damage to a new growth. And I want to also see how easy it comes out. I have not actually soaked this pot at all. I want to know if I can just pull it out without too much resistance. Very encouraging that the stake came out easily and then see if I can just put it into a bigger pot. That's the plan. Make it easy, keep it simple. I'm not ready to water this one just yet. Push comes to shove. I will definitely soak it and then we'll wait a little bit for it to settle in and get all soft and a little bit more manageable. But if this works without soaking, even better. So let's have a look, see. It doesn't feel tough. It doesn't feel rock hard like other ones that I've repotted. So I've, I've got hope. You can see that I had some, oh, look at that, perfect. All right, that was great. That is actually, for me, the best way to do it. And then we can have a proper look-see at the root system. Release some of the lecker, because I don't plan to be chopping away at these roots. There's no need. Some of them are still alive. Maybe I can trim a third off the bottom, but and some of the leca feels a little bit damp still because I do on occasions just give catacetums in my collection a flush during the winter so that the leca doesn't desiccate any of the viable roots because that can easily happen. Leca can withdraw water from viable roots if left to be too dry for too long. So it's nice that there's a little bit of a damp feel here still. It's coming off nice and easy. I'm glad I didn't soak it. I'm glad I tried it this way first. This is perfect. Oh, wow. Very pleased that it was this easy. Cleaning the leco will be a chore. I can already see that coming. That'll be a nightmare with the toothbrush once again. Get the lecker beads clean for recycling and into the next bucket. All this has to be scrubbed off. But it's easier than doing it with lava rock. Let me just get rid of some of this sheaths at the bottom now that I can reach. Make sure I don't have any pests down there. And we have had some extreme weather conditions. So it's been a beautiful sunny day so far and everybody is taking advantage. And if you hear any background noise in parts that I can't edit out, I do apologize. But there's a lot of activity going on. Everybody has a little bit of a need to be outside, which is understandable, goodness me. Okay, let me pick that up so no puppy gets it. Some of the roots feel papery and others feel just fine, even though they don't look the part. There's still life in them. And I can't tell you how glad I am that I can do this now, that I had a break in the weather because Murphy's Law says you want to get the timing right, and then suddenly 
the orchid starts to wake up again and it's like, oh, I've missed it by a day or two. And <laughs> yeah. It's a make makes a big difference to be able to work on a catacetum that is not growing a new growth. And the leca is coming off easily on the roots that aren't viable. I can feel if a leca bead is holding on like this one, that's a viable root. But we'll look at it much more closely just now. All right, look at this. You see, here's the dead roots, very papery. But then up here, next to that, is a live root. Even though it is broken at the end from what I did to it, but there is a clear difference of a live root right here. This one, as opposed to something that looks like this one right here. So I'm gonna be trimming some of those back. This is gonna to be tough to clean. Every single bit of root, I'm going to have to scrub off with a toothbrush. So my left thumb is going to be sore again. <laughs> I'm just making my life a little bit easier with regards to not having to sift out the dead roots once I've cut them. Now these catacetony, they do look tough and the bulbs and everything but they're actually very easy to puncture. So I'm very cautious with my nails not to scratch or damage the bulbs. They feel firm, but they're very, very delicate if I were to pierce them with a nail. So I'm trying to avoid that. So just like with any other orchid root, there is a velamen. You can see how papery that is. And then you can see the viable root is still fleshy on the inside. Now I don't want to cut it all the way back because I don't want to put another stake into my orchid this time around. I want to be able to have something for anchoring. And the pot it's going to go in is much, much bigger. Plenty of aeration, plenty of room for the new roots to grow. All right, let's get its new home situated, ready. Bigger pot. I went from a 15 centimeter to an 18 centimeter. Let's see. That'll be good for a year. Maybe two years, but we'll go with that. And I'm going to do the usual with my microfiber get it through the holes and I'm giving it two microfibers because of its thirstiness. Once it gets going and it's time to water full on, now that it has increased in size, it's gonna be even more thirsty than it ever was before. So I wanna make sure that I keep maintaining enough moisture in the pot for it to pull through and up. My typical loop, which I will fill with leca underneath. And seeing as these aren't as finicky when it comes to them growing, I am using what I consider my dirty leca, although it's all been cleaned up and picked out and chosen. The leca beads are also a little bit smaller, and that's great for more water retention than if I were to use large leca bits. Let's keep checking the height because there comes a time for slow release fertilizer. This is uh, the Miracle Grow, the only one that I can get here in Spain. And I'm going to put in 50 grams at least to just have a look see if that's good enough. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of it 
right at the bottom of the pot. Give it a good distribution down there, about half of it. Last year I used 25 grams, but the orchid did not have that many bulbs. Now it has three. So I'm going to go with a full 50 grams of slow release fertilizer. And for me, that is not done and dusted. I still fertilize at 300 parts per million with every watering when in active growth. So prior, I had 25 grams and we know that slow release fertilizer has a lifespan of six months once it activates based on the warmth of the water and the temperature. But because I had my orchid in there for two years, I'm sure that one year the slow release fertilizer had lost its properties. So with 300 parts per million, I was still fertilizing the first year with Osmocote in some cases, and the second year, just 300. And the orchid has done just fine two years in a pot. So I'm gonna set her right bang in the middle because I don't know where the new growths will be coming out. And she might look a little bit low at this point, but I'll raise her up just now. Just enough leca around the sides to hold her steady. Hold her and then I'm going to shake just a little bit. Now under normal circumstances, I would say that's fine because there's something that we have to remember. As the roots start to fill the pot, the orchid also starts to raise herself out of the pot because of the space and the occupancy of how many roots are going into the space and below. So I'm quite tempted actually just to leave her at the height that she is right now, preempting a little bit of what is to come regarding root growth in the pot. We'll fill a little bit more around the edges, just a little bit. There's not really much more that needs to be done. This is fantastic. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Now, obviously, the leka is wet and she's asleep, but that's okay because of my setup those roots never really dried out. There was still a little bit of dampness around them right at the beginning when I unpotted her, especially in the middle. So a little bit of damp is not an issue, but obviously the leka now being wet, I'm not going to flush her through or water her. Whatever the roots will absorb at this point in time, they have access to some moisture. Yes, this is good. Now, if all my catacetums come out this easy, I'm gonna need to buy some more. So I hope that this was helpful. If not, let me know in the comments below. If it was of interest, I appreciate that you did stay all the way to the end. And thank you very, very much for doing so. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Please stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye.